pedestal worthy. It's holding up just fine. Oh, what's up, y'all? Snipes and Star Blatts, your unauthorized place for Disney, Pixar, Marvel, and Lucasfilm. We're coming at y'all from Asgard today so we can talk about Thor Ragnarok, third Thor film. All right, I'm just going to get right into it, but first I want to explain what's going on right here. I was told that if I'm worthy enough to review this film, then I must also be worthy enough to lift Mjolnir, Thor's hammer. So, as we review this film, little by little I'm going to take breaks and take one more crack at trying to lift up this thing that the Lord of Thunder decided to set in front of me. Um, but I'm pretty sure I can see it through. I have the will and I have faith in my ability, kind of. Anyway, whole nother story. We're going to talk about Thor Riding Around. Let's get right into it. Man, this movie was... I did not expect myself to be as entertained in this movie going into it as I was. This movie is hysterically funny. And when it's not funny, you've got your jaw dropped because you're witnessing some of the most amazing fight choreography I've ever seen. Uh, I'm going to go a list from character to character in a second. But first, I want to get out of my way the one downfall of this movie because... It's the only thing that I feel like I didn't care for in this movie, and it's the only reason I will say the original, the first Thor, is still the best out of this trilogy. And that's because the first Thor, it, it transcended comic books and superheroes and stuff like that, and it gave normal movie audiences that didn't wasn't into that stuff, it gave them a Marvel movie that they could kind of get into because they're used to watching movies about gods and stuff like that. So that it, it kind of it, it resonated with them more, say, than a actual superhero film with the Avengers and Captain America and stuff like that. Because, I mean, look, Clash of the Titans, you can go down list for list how many movies have been made about gods. So they just, I mean, this it transcended. And it was a great movie. It stood alone. Thor was really, really good. I love that movie. The second one, uh, that's a whole nother story. Like I said, I don't think Marvel's made a bad movie, but if I had to put them in a list, I'm sure that one would end up on the bottom of the list. But that's neither here nor there, because we're here to talk about Thor Ragnarok, right? So, alright, like I said, one downfall. The downfall is this movie does not stand alone at all, unless you are invested in the Marvel Universe. And I mean invested. You this I could just off the top of my head, you have to see Avengers. Avengers 2. Doctor Strange, the two Thors. You might even want to throw in the Incredible Hulk just for a little extra. And then definitely see the Guardians of the Galaxy so you can kind of familiar yourself with the actual galaxy that's being built besides the Earth-based heroes because a lot of this takes place on the planet Sakaar, which is a very colorful Guardians of the Galaxy-esque planet. And it looks like it belongs in that galaxy that James Gunn has created for us. And it looks like we're going to see more of that galaxy as we go along. But that's the only way this movie fails for me is the fact that it will alienate some. Because it is really only for the people that are heavily invested in the Marvel Universe. In fact, if you were to watch this Thor trilogy as a trilogy, I, I think by the third one you just kind of would be like, what the hell? I mean, you definitely have to throw in Avengers and all the rest. So, now that I got to the only downfall of this movie for me, because other than that, I think this movie was great. And if the only downfall is you have to watch more movies to enjoy it, to make it that much more enjoyable, then, hey, they got something going for them right there. But, before I get into the characters, I'm going to lift this thing. All right, I saw it move. I know I saw it move. Y'all saw it. I'm going to get it by the end of this, but let's go to the characters. Thor, obviously Thor. Thor was the more light-spirited Thor you see from the comic book this time. He, he didn't take himself as seriously. Thor was very quippy in this movie, and it was really good. It was fun seeing Thor have fun being Thor. And in fact, speaking of having fun... It was fun watching a movie where it looked like everyone was having fun making the movie. This movie looked like it was a lot of fun to make because I mean, it, it, 
to hear the director a couple of days ago say that when he first shot this movie, he only had 10 minutes of hilarious in the beginning and then the rest of it was boring. I can't even believe that after watching what I just watched because it, like I said, it was entertaining throughout. There was not one moment of this movie that was not entertaining. And obviously if you go from Thor, you next have to go to Loki who Loki was just wow. I mean, Loki always steals the show. You love to hate, to love, to hate, to love, to hate, to love Loki. And you will do the same in this movie. You get a lot of Loki. You know, you get, it's just, wow. Like, I try not to spoil anything. I've got all these things in my head that I want to tell y'all so bad, but I'm trying to word it right. And, uh, like, Hella. Oh, my God. I don't want to say anything about Hella. Just because you've been wanting a villain, Hella is your villain. Helen, Hella might actually be a villain that the whole Avengers might have, should have took on. And that makes me totally realize where there's a Valkyrie and a Hulk. And Loki is a big part of this team in this Thor, the Revengers. Because they just, they, when Hella takes the first scene that she walks into Asgard and they really, she makes her presence known for lack of words, you can see Hella in action. You haven't seen a Marvel villain do what this Marvel villain does. This Marvel villain takes unstoppable force to a whole nother level. She is the goddess of death because if you see this woman, you're probably going to die. Um, that's just needless to say. So there's your three like main characters. Valkyrie took the scene. I was a little worried. Her first appearance was a whole way off from the Valkyrie I've always known in comic books. So at first I was like, oh God, here we go. But the more and more I got into her character, the more I really, really, really started to accept her character. And eventually by the end of the movie, I love Valkyrie. Valkyrie is awesome. And that leads me to the Hulk. Oh man, y'all, they've teased that the next three movies are going to be like this if you can find three Hulk parts out of these three movies, they're going to be this like miniature Hulk movie that they're trying to do. Something to do with the production or the distribution rights. Anyway, long story that doesn't have to be in the movie review. Um, anyway, they're not going to give you a Hulk, but they are going to give you a, basically a three-part Hulk run in the next three movies. If this starts it off, this is Hulk like you've only seen him in cartoons and comic books. This is Hulk like you want to see Hulk. This is great. I loved the Hulk in this movie. I loved Banner in this movie. I, it's, like I said, this movie is so entertaining. Goldblum? Oh, the Grand Master was great. Oh, man. He was hilarious. I, I want to see him and his brother, the Collector, in the same room just for at least a small amount of time just to see how that bounces off of each other. That's one of my, like look forwards to Avengers now after seeing his character. He was amazing. And I mean, let's see, that's, I think that's all the character lists besides Odin. I mean, Odin, it's Anthony Hopkins. I don't have to say anything about Odin just because it is Anthony Hopkins. So tell you what, before I sum this up and really get into the end, I'm going to try to lift this thing one more time. Here we go for Midgard. Oh, oh, it budged. Oh. <laughs> no. All right, whatever. We'll sum this up and we'll go on. Um, like I said, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. My one drawback is you have to see more movies to see this movie. And if that's a drawback, hey, that's a drawback I'm all for because I love sitting watching these movies. So definitely go see it. If you do go see it, go see it big. Go see it at a theater. This movie is a grand scale that I can't even describe. Like this movie is huge. Go see this movie in a theater. Go see, I saw it in 3D. And if you are even half a fan of 3D, go see this movie in 3D. It was a experience. I saw it in real D. It was a total experience. I loved it this movie and how entertaining it was. Everyone that went with me, my wife, my kid, they were so entertained. The whole theater was just laughing and having fun. I, this is what you want a theater experience to be, is, is an entertaining, fun experience. I would suggest this movie to anyone who's invested in these films. 
And just all in all, yes, go see this. You will not, you will not hate yourself for going to see this. However, like I said, Avengers, Avengers 2, Thor, Thor 2, and The Incredible Hulk, and Doctor Strange. See those six. Those six movies will put you on the right path. You might even be able to drop The Incredible Hulk out there. Just see five. Those five movies will put you on the right path to thoroughly enjoying this movie. Anyway. Check the description for more links if you want to hear my views on anything else that's going on in the world of Marvel, Pixar, Disney, Lucasfilm, any of the above. Check the description. It's got links, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, we've got our website, snipesandstarflats.com. Check us out. Um, until then, well, you know what? Wait. Wait. It's probably for not... Here goes nothing. For Asgard!